measurement of how valuable one thinks they are. So a person with high self-esteem will value themselves, uh, will, they'll think highly of themselves, and one with low self-esteem will think, or low self-esteem will think lowly of themselves. And just wondering if anyone would like to share if they feel they have low or high self-esteem. Any volunteers? Steven? I have high. I, I know you well, so I definitely got that from you. <laughs> and Shelby, how do you feel about your self-esteem? I mean, uh, I'd probably be in the middle. I don't think I have, like, depends, I guess. On, like, who I'm around. Like, if I'm around people, I know that I have high self-esteem because they know me, but, like, with people I don't know, I'm not really sure. Okay. The idea is that one has a higher self-esteem, they'll likely perform better and have more success in school and interpersonal relationships and in the workforce. And the book lists some things that people can do to improve their self-esteem, including to attack self-destructive beliefs. So it's good to avoid negative beliefs about yourself but also to avoid or to avoid unrealistic beliefs. So like don't don't have risky <coughs> goals. Like well not everything has to be a risky goal. Like, you don't want something that's not gonna happen to be one of your goals. Because you'll just like you'll likely fail and you'll feel bad. And to, another thing to do is to seek out nourishing people. The book <coughs> lists two types of people as noxious people. Those are people who are very critical of you and they like criticize all the things that you do. And nourishing people are the good kind of people you want to be around because they make you feel better by providing you with positive feedback and like helping you to improve yourself. And I was wondering if there's any examples that anyone had of a nourishing person in their life, one that always provides them with good comments and feedback. Uh, Murphy? Anyone? Family. What's that? Family. Family for you? Well, for me, my godparents. You got parents? Family and friends. Family and friends. So it's just anyone have a person <coughs> that they know of that's an anxious person that they just don't want to be around. So they're always critical of everyone and it's just not going to be around them. My mom's like that. My mom's a really negative person. But my dad's the opposite. Like every time I get on the phone with him, he has to say he's proud of me or something like that. And then my mom will get on the phone with her and she's like, you're not doing enough. It's kind of like a counterbalance. <laughs> yeah. My mom was the same way. I, I felt I never could please my mom. My dad was great. Yeah. So it's not a, it's not a new story. Yeah. <laughs> and it also lists to work on projects that you will know that will lead to success. In, in your successes, you'll, you'll become happy, and it's important to remember those emotions and those feelings to continue so you're, in general, a happier and more successful person. But if failure does happen, but when you can't, you can't get down when you fail. Like, you have to use the failure and, like, what do I need to do better? How can I improve myself on this? and to remind yourself of your successes. So know what your talents are and what you're good at and work with that. Like, you wanna get better on what you're already good at, what you've already found success in. And is there, so asking for some special talents or something that one's good at, that's like, the thing that characterizes you. Brand, I think.
film a good speaker. Very good speaker? Good speaker. Good open speaker. <coughs> open speaker. Yeah. Okay. So do you what do you plan on going into? Is that uh, broadcasting. All right, so makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Cecilia? Um, I sing well. Do art. Okay. So. Sure. <laughs> Is that what you plan on going into also? Yeah, I'm an art therapy major. Okay. Very well. So, well, me, I'll share a little bit myself. I'm a pretty good runner, so I don't plan on going anywhere with that out of college, maybe to coach or something. But uh, it's just something I really enjoy, and I find success in doing so. So having a good self-esteem is an important characteristic to have, not only to be more likely to gain success, but to also feel better about yourself and to live a happier life. So. Hey, Jeremiah. Um. We had a team of two, and then Dujon, who isn't here, you know, Jeremiah. Um, we have the next discussion opportunity. If you'll look at the syllabus, it isn't until March 1. Student-led discussion of DeVito's analysis of the idea of listening and memory, and in particular, the, uh, the evidence that he, that he uses on <coughs> note taking and etc. So I will ask again on that. Uh, also notice that uh, <coughs> paper two is is due February 21st. So what you want to do is go back to that unit prompts, go to prompt number two. And again, it's 250 to, to 500 words. Some of you only wrote like 150 words. Stretch it a bit, guys. And the more you write about an actual event rather than a theoretical event, and one that's fairly recent, the more you'll recall, and the better your writing will be. So, as I've said, I returned the first paper for everyone who's turned it in. There were four people who didn't get it in yet. You still have, can get it in. It's still open. Um, I've returned those papers. And what happens now is you get my notes, now you see what I want. You now have a chance to rewrite one of these four papers for a grade. That means that you know what I want, you know how to make me happy, you should get an A. Everybody should get an A. That's my goal is that everybody should get an A, but also that everybody should become a better editor. It's part of what I'm trying to teach you is how to be a better editor. So that's, that's coming up now. Next week you'll have next Tuesday. Next Tuesday we come back with rules, schemata, and scripts. So there really isn't a uh, place to talk about self-disclosure. We're going to do that online. Uh, talk about appropriate self-disclosure. Um, there is a, a quiz in here, if you would, on page 31. Not right now, but before Thursday. Take a look at those things. How much would you disclose uh, and rate them one to five? One is I would, I would, five is I would not, and in those situations. And then the next page gives you a key to understanding, and I'll talk a little bit about that in the online video. As I say, that'll be about 10 minutes long. Um, what else do I want to draw to your attention? Oh, your second paper, now, I'll review it, and you'll review it. So on the 21st, you want to bring that paper with you, and there is a, a handout online that shows you what you're going to talk about in class. So you'll review it with one other person. You bring your paper along, and you get to read it with one other person, you get to review it with one other person. Hopefully you become then a better editor of others' works on the way to becoming a better editor of your works. 
you also are going to, we're going to be talking about uh, uh, the article First Date Sexual Expectations, The Effects of Who Asked, Who Paid, Date, Location, and Gender, which is in Communication Studies 2010. And on our website, you will find an embedded video Class, all of our class stuff. You will find an embedded video on how to order interlibrary loan. It's a minute and 50 seconds, and it shows you how to order exactly this particular article. Okay? So once you go online, go to AS, ASAP, uh, Extended Academic, order the article, and then Hopefully, it will come in plenty of time for you to read it. And I will warn you about the article. It's a difficult article. If you are not a social science major, you will find this tough sledding. Get through it as best you can. One of the things you can do is not pay too much time, on, too much mind to the statistics. Read the text. Okay, that's it for today, guys. We'll see you a week from today. Uh, it, you can watch the video in the embedded videos, and the syllabus gives you the title of the article. Okay? All right, folks. All right,